Hi, I'm CC and my grandpa John's new Eberhardt Signature Saddle will be available through Tethered at the end of August. In all the video clips in this show, my grandpa John is wearing his Eberhardt Signature Saddle. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye. Ready? Okay, we just finished talking about the differences in height hook up as far as the tree tether hooked up at arm's reach versus eye level when you're standing on your steps and how much more of an advantage it is the lower you keep it. Uh, some other advantages, and this is actually, I also reattach the actual lineman uh, or tree tether rope, so keep that in mind. The orange nowadays from tethered is always the tree tether. The green is the lineman safety rope that goes around the tree. Um, so I'm just going to talk about some other advantages, but the first thing I want to do is I want to adjust this so you guys will know how this signet, Eberhardt Signature Saddle works, because I have it overlapped just like I just got in the tree. So I'm going to turn around so you can see my butt and you can see my soccer mom minivan in the background. Everybody knows that. Ernie calls it the van of death or something like that. So you just lift up on your lift up in the tree a little bit, pull up on the tree, and then you can slide these panels by grabbing the outer panel. It's easy to now identify the outer from the inner panel because the outer panel has the lineman loop on, and the outer saddle set or the outer panel also has the waist belt on the inside top of the panel. So it's really easy when you reach down there. It's got a lot more stuff right there to grab onto. It also has the mollies on it. The saddle has mollies all the way around it, so you can hook any of any of the tethered molly pouches onto it. So basically, you grab the top of the outside panel, and you just kind of pull it up to wherever you want it. And again, right there is about a 12-inch seat. Uh, I personally like to have them slightly overlapped, so I like about an 8 to 10 inch, 9 to 10 inch seat. So that would be about the way I like to hunt. And I'll get back over here onto my steps to the side. And I kind of wanted to talk about advantages of saddle hunting for people that kind of are just getting into this and kind of paying attention to it. Uh, it's the safest system there is out there, period. There, you, there is no tree stand, no climbers, uh, no ladders. Nothing is safer than a saddle because you are 100% tethered to the tree from the moment you leave the ground till you step back on the ground. I've had people come to my workshops with their kids and their, their wives or the kids' moms won't even let them hunt out of anything because out of, other than a saddle because of safety, safety reasons. They want the kid always to be hooked up to the tree. So you're always hooked to the tree, even when you get up in the tree getting ready to hunt, you set up your tree tether, you, know, you leave your lineman, lineman rope around the tree till you hook up your tree tether then you hook that up to your bridge, then you disattach your lineman, lineman rope, put it in your pouch. When you get done hunting, take that back out, reattach it, then you disattach your tree tether and you go down the tree with the lineman rope back on the tree. So it's the safe, safest thing out there. Uh, you can shoot 360 degrees. If I wanted to shoot you, I would have a couple options. I could either let out a little bit of, little bit of bridge or tree tether and I could, my my option would be and this is something I have a problem with on a lot of videos okay I'm right-handed so if I see an opportunity developing on that side that's a very difficult shot for a right-hander some people call it a weak shot so what you see on a lot of these videos which in in managed areas and parks and permit areas, you know, it might work because those deer tolerate a lot more stuff from humans than, than deer in pressured areas where they're getting shot at all the time. But uh, one thing I have always noticed is you want to be as low profile in a tree as possible because when the foliage is down, you stick out like a sore thumb. And I see lots of guys where they'll stand up and they'll spin their bodies around uh, I see it on platforms a lot, especially, and they'll, they'll kind of stand up and spin their bodies around so that they can shoot over there. You know, they basically spin their bodies around this way so they can shoot that way. That's a whole lot of movement on the same side of the tree as the deer's on. That is just not cool. You are going to get picked at some point in time by a smart deer. Uh, again, if you're hunting in managed properties or parks, 
uh, suburban areas, you can get away with a lot, a lot of stuff. If you're hunting pressured areas, you're not going to get away with that on a three to three and a half year old buck and older. Very often. You will a few times, but not very often. So the ideal scenario on that weak side shot is to move around the tree like this. Okay, as soon as you see it developing, you move around the tree and keep that tree between you and the deer. Now you can, because you moved around the tree and it lifted your body up a little bit, you can let out a little bit of lead, maybe an inch and a half is all you need. And then when that shot develops, you basically just move around here and take that shot tight to the tree. Nothing's in your way. Your tree tether's not in your way. The tree is your blocker for your body and you're not making all that ridiculous, in my opinion, movement over on this side of the tree, the same side as the deer's on. Super simple to get picked that way. But years that's gonna be corn, standing corn, for me to have a shot to the edge of that standing corn over there, which is about 25 yards, I just lift my bow up from here, put it on that bow hanger, move over to this step here, and now I can swing out here and I can take that shot because it's right in that direction. I can take that shot there. So there's another scrape down there, but I've got plenty of shot opportunities over there. Another option to shoot there, let's say, let's say I was sitting here because this tree has so much cover in it. There's a possibility that I may also just do this and twist my body around and take that shot. But more than likely, because I always like to keep my, I always like to keep the tree as a buffer. More than likely, this is the way I'm going to come, just like that. Keeping the tree as a buffer is a big, 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 big deal. That's why when I see these YouTube videos where the guys are on the side of the tree, you know, they're here and their shots over there, and they make this big movement. If they don't think there's going to come a time when they're going to get picked, they're sadly mistaken because they will unless they're hunting out west or they're hunting in a suburban or a city park or something like that where just deer don't look up and they don't know what danger is. But when you're hunting bucks that are, you know, three years old and older in a pressured area where there's very few of them, uh, yeah, your odds are getting picked are pretty high. One stat that I didn't mention when I was kind of given my resume, of the 31 bucks that I've got in the Michigan record book, 28 of them because I butcher my own deer, 28 of those deer had previous hunter wounds. They either had projectiles in them or scars from broadheads or bullets or bullets in them. Uh, one buck in particular had two 12 gauge buckshot in his neck, had a two and a quarter inch vortex broadhead sticking out of his left shoulder, which was all covered in cartilage, so had been there at least a year, had a 12 gauge slug in his butt. So 28 of the 31 three and a half year old and older bucks I've shot in Michigan that made book and I've shot some older ones that didn't make buck, have had previous wounds. Of the 19 bucks I've shot out of state that were all P and Y and bigger, zero of them had ever been touched by another hunter projectile. That's the difference between hunting pressure, consequential hunting pressure, and light pressure, or I may sit maybe an inch or two lower, probably about like that. And I'm usually, if I'm hunting this location, I could be out here while I'm hunting, but as soon as I see any activity coming to this this location, my body's coming back behind the tree because this is a destination location. They're coming to those apple trees. That's my shot right in, right in front of me. It's a very small zone. Uh, so anyway, this is, this is the tree. I hide behind the tree the best that I can. And then when a shot opportunity or if a shot opportunity happens, bow's hanging right here, just slide over and make my shot. I can also, there's a couple runways that cross the river so I can also swing around here. I've got a bow holder over here and I can shoot that direction as well, crossing the river. They could also cross the river over here and I've got that shot as well. So I got lots of cover. Uh, when I came to this tree the first time with my group of workshop guys, I didn't have it prepped. It was a spot I was going to prep and I asked everybody what tree would they pick None of them picked this tree. They all picked either one of these white oaks, which if you notice, if you watch a lot of YouTube videos from hunters that haven't really killed a lot of stuff out of a saddle or anything big or mature, they 
you're almost always seeing them go up small diameter, straight trunk trees. Both of those trees fit that description. They're just straight trunk trees. But when you're in a straight trunk tree and it's a small diameter, it's hard to hide behind it. And you're just more apt to get picked. When you're in something like this, you got, you got a lot of stuff here where even if your body's here and nothing's moving, a deer is very likely, you know, if he's looking around, he's not even going to notice you because you're just part of the back. You're just part of the actual tree. Uh, when you're in a straight trunk tree and there's a body sticking out on the side, it's very, very obvious. So it's a lot, lot simpler to get picked. And you can just get away with a lot more movements and stuff in a tree like this. And another thing I see on a lot of videos is I see, I see hunters like leaning out with their foot up against a branch like this to take a shot. That should never, ever happen. That should never, ever happen. Your feet should always be planted firmly on either a platform or on steps or something, both of your feet. You shoot a lot more accurately that way. You got half of your weight in your butt. You got maybe 25% of your weight in each of your legs. You just got a lot more stable position. And anytime you start putting your foot against a tree and pushing, you know, you might have rough bark. So your foot might break a piece of bark and make a noise. You're just in an awkward position. And with a saddle, you don't need to do that. I've, of the 44 book bucks I've shot out of a saddle, I have never ever had to put my foot up on the side of a tree. So keep the tree between you and the actual target animal. At a destination location, that's extremely important. It's critical because if you're set up at a destination location and you're set up, let's say, okay, if that's, let's say you are an oak tree. Ah, uh, how am I want to get it? Okay, if you're, if, let's say you're in a tree stand. If you were in a tree stand, you'd be kicked off right here. If you're right-handed in a tree stand, you'd have that platform right out here. Your seat would be right here so that you can take that easy shot. You couldn't put your stand, if it's a bigger diameter tree, on the back side of the tree and use the tree as a blocker because then you couldn't shoot through the tree to get that shot to the, to the apple tree or the oak tree. So in a saddle, what you would do is you'd set up your primary, you'd set up primarily where you're gonna be on the back side of the tree. So when you wrap your tree tether around the tree, it's gonna be coming down straight here as opposed to where I am here. So you got the tree as a 100% blocker because you're gonna have multiple deer standing there and eating. It could be fawns, subordinate bucks, mature does, whatever. You're gonna have deer that may be eating there for 20 minutes, four or five of them. And they're looking around, their ears are moving, moving, especially in pressured areas, they're always on high alert. So with the tree as a buffer, you're much, much less apt to get picked and you're always just peeking around the corner as opposed to having your body totally exposed on this side like you would with a tree stand. So you're just keeping that tree as a buffer and then when a shot opportunity comes, you just make a little slip to the side, your bow's gonna be hanging right here. You just lift up your bow and boom, you make that shot very little bit of your body has to stick out to make that shot. So you can not only shoot 360 by going around the tree and shooting any direction, you know, over there, wherever, uh, you can use the tree as a buffer. And in certain locations, you wanna set the tree up as a buffer. Uh, this is made out of fabric. So there's never any noise, you know, metal, all tree stands are made out of some form of metal. So you get creaking at the joints or, you know, they rust and creak. They're, you know, they're cumbersome, they weigh a lot, they have a frame. You know, when, if you're freelancing on a DIY hunt, you're carrying a big frame uh, tree stand. A lot of guys are carrying sticks. I'm not a big stick fan myself. Uh, then you're carrying your bow, you're carrying a backpack. That is just a lot of, not just weight. It's not so much the weight to me, it's the cumbersome. It's the cumbersome and it's the frame, your whole body frame. So if you're DIY hunting and you wanna kill big bucks, you gotta go back into the security cover if you're hunting pressured areas. And when you're buck and brush to go back in security cover, all that stuff, you're gonna be cussing and swearing. I mean, you just don't wanna carry all that heavy, bulky, weird shaped stuff. So you wanna be as low profile and as uh, mobile as, as possible. So uh, have, being cumbersome is, 
overly cumbersome with a tree stand and a bunch of big tall sticks you know they make a lot of nice sticks nowadays which we're going to show you uh, being cumbersome is a big big deal for freelancing on on public land especially in pressured areas um, where you got to get back into the security cover again you can hide behind the tree big issue nobody can steal it i've hunted out of the same saddle for 40 years i bought it in 1981 i've modified it a few times hunting out of the same one I bought 40 years ago. If I had had tree stands, I'd have probably went through 150 tree stands because I've probably set up a thousand trees. Yeah, I'd say 500 safely. I'd say 500 trees. Uh, and when you're hunting out of tree stands, you gotta have a tree stand for every spot or else when you go in and you're toting it, it's, you're gonna make the noise of hanging it and pulling it up the tree and, uh, it's, and cumbersome to carry again. So with the saddle, it rolls up into a nice small little package. I carry mine in my backpack. Most guys actually put it on at their vehicles and walk in with it on just like you're, wear, just like you're wearing a pair of pants, uh, which is fine. So it's fabric, doesn't make any noise, and it doesn't weigh squat, and it has no cumbersome frame. Nobody's going to steal it. You only need one to hunt every tree you ever prep for the rest of your lives, whether you're hunting private or public, especially private land guys. I own a 37-acre parcel. I've got 17 trees prepped. I can go to any one of those 17 trees and hunt out of the same saddle. And I've got public land spots. Just climb the tree, hunt out of the same saddle. You know, I, every year I go into, into the season with 40 to 50 trees prepped. Uh, I may only hunt 12 of them during the season according to mast and fruit production, uh, crop rotations, change where scrapes might be. Um, just you know a lot of differing cinch or uh, circumstances so some are early season some are morning some are evening some are rut phase locations only so i may have a lot of trees but i only hunt 10 probably 10 to 15 at the most of a year of those trees so you can prep a lot of trees and you're only hunting out one saddle for the rest of your life you know even though they come with five-year warranties there's really nothing to go wrong with it it's a strap that's like putting a five-year warranty on a safety belt in a car if you have a car that's 30 years old the safety belt still works and it's the same exact kind of strapping material so it's still functional um, just trying to think of all the other advantages gleaning trees you know that's that's probably a really big deal one of the one or two of the videos that I got out on the uh, Eberhardt Eberhardt channel will be out of leaning trees with very severe leans and um, basically on a leaning tree you always want to be on the side of the tree like you're climbing up the ladder where the tree is leaning away from you and with leaning trees you can't shoot the whole 360 because when you swing around to the back side of a leaning tree when you swing around to this side gravity will take over and it'll pull you down so instead of shooting 360 out of a leaning tree you can probably shoot 270 depending on the amount of lean some leaning trees uh, it's no problem to shoot 360 but if it's got a severe lean like some of the trees I hunt you're gonna get 270 instead of 360 okay, recording. okay this I'm up in that angled tree I don't know what this lean is it's probably at, I'm guessing 15 degrees maybe a little bit more um, and I'm in the spot where there's a shallow, the river widens out and it's a shallow river crossing, bedding over here, bedding over here, bedding across the river, and then a crop field also across the river. So this here is another transition dump, basically, because you got transition zone between the pines over here and the uh, what are now briars, this bedding area over here, bedding area over there, bedding area over there. Everything kind of comes together right here and also on that other bend where that other oak was. But I had to prep this leaning tree, and I know there's a lot of people that wonder how you hunt out of a leaning tree. Well, this is how you do it. You always get on the side of the tree as though you're on a ladder facing away from you. And in reality, hunting out of a leaning tree is, is way more comfortable than hunting out of any other tree because you can basically just lean against the tree and fall asleep if you get here an hour and a half before daylight, which this is typically one of those types of trees. And typically when I kind of nod off, I'll wrap my arms around the actual lead, which this is the lead, and I'll put my head on here and just kind of go to sleep. And typically I wrap my arms around it because once in a while you jerk, 
you know, when you're sleeping and you just not, you kind of jump. So this way, you're kind of locked into the lead with your arms wrapped around it. You can't, you know, if you're out here and you do that, you could, you know, you're not gonna fall out of the saddle, but you could definitely slide over to the side and go upside down, which is not cool. You could still get hurt doing that. So anyway, on a leaning tree, very important. When you're on a leaning tree, now I can't swing around to the back side of this tree. And on any leaning tree that leans this much, you rarely can get to the back side. So you're not gonna have 360, but you're probably gonna have 270. I can swing here and I can shoot over here. So I can shoot from that angle. This is my primary shooting area right here. I've got about a 90 degree zone where I'm physically gonna get a shot. And I did shoot a book buck out of this tree two years ago. So I've got, this is my kill zone. This is my pers perspective kill zone, but I can still shoot over here. Anytime I'm hunting out of a leaning tree, I always, on the side of my tree, for me moving around this way, I always put a step, something to grab where I've got a good handhold, and then I can shoot back over into here. So I've basically got, I wouldn't even say 270, I've probably got about a, I'd say a 210 degree shooting distance, but keep in mind, out of a tree that leans like this, you can't put a hang on in this tree. There is no way. A ladder stand probably wouldn't be too good in this tree because the tree is so disfigured at the base. So on a leaning tree, it's super, super simple to shoot in a lot of areas. And it's, it's more comfortable than hunting a straight trunk tree. It's also much easier to climb because basically when you put your steps up the tree, um, you're climbing it just as you would a ladder. Now, a lot of times crooked trees like this, and I don't think you can see the base of it from there, but it's got a big kink in the side. So this tree here might even be a little bit big diameter for a lot of sticks because sticks, the straps aren't that big around. So a tree like this, this is spiked because the farmer let me do it, but a tree like this, you'd usually want to use some form of screw in steps because then the tree diameter doesn't matter. Uh, he let me spike it on this particular tree. And it's really, really comfortable, super simple. Now, if you're hunting in a leaning tree that let's say it just has a slight lean, let's say it has a five degree lean. When you put your steps around the back side of the tree, and I'm not a big proponent of standing on something in front of the tree and not having anything on the back side. I think that is absolutely ridiculous for somebody to do that, to just, put your feet on the side of something and then let your body gravity take it to the side and to shoot over there. Uh, I'm a big proponent of steps because I like to keep my body profile tight to the tree so it's gonna be less apt to get picked. You can hunt big diameter trees. I can hunt trees that big around. Basically, if, if this tree tether rope doesn't fit around it, I just buy a half inch rope, put tie a loop on the end at a hardware store and I use that as my tree tether. I can, I can make a half inch rope as long as I want it. I can make it 30 feet if I want. So I hunt big diameter trees. I hunt small diameter trees. Um, that's a big deal. That is a big, big deal. Cause I like hunting big trees cause you got more wood, you got more stuff to hide behind. It's just much, much more difficult for a deer to pick you when you're in a big tree. I see all these YouTube videos and these guys are in trees like this side, the, I don't know if you can see that hatchet. The, you know, trees that are that size or maybe a couple inches bigger. I never hunt out of a tree. I mean, if that's the only tree that I have an option to hunt in a location, I might hunt it, but man, oh man, in the areas I hunt, your odds of getting picked in a tree that diameter when the leaves are down are pretty close to 80 to 90%, even by the mature does. You are just not gonna get away with much. So the bigger the tree, the more you can get away with, the higher you get, uh, the more you can get away with subtle movements. You know, I've hunted trees. I, my, my average height is, I'd say, 25 to maybe 28 feet high to my feet. Okay, I'm up in this big, kind of a bur oak, white oak, and I'm out in the swamp, and uh, this is really, a, <laughs> really, really a good spot. Uh, this is a private spot, and I'm the only guy, there's a lot of guys hunting this property. I'm the only person, the owner, lets hunt in the swamp on this particular property. This is one of my three private parcels that I have permission to hunt. 
And the only reason he lets me hunt in the swamp because he 100% trusts my scent control regiment. Nobody else has a scent control regiment and he's concerned about them blowing deer out of the swamp. And this is also a spot where I primarily only hunt on all day since an hour and a half before daylight till after dark. And basically here I am. So there's runways where the cameraman's at. There's runways going this way. There's basically runways in a lot of different spots right here. And it's because there's an oak here and there's two other oaks over here. They're both all the same. They're all three big white bur oaks. And the years they have acorns, it's a really good spot. Um, you shoot better out of a saddle. And I'm gonna kind of show you what I mean by that. When I'm sitting here like this, and I'm just turning like this so you can see me. Can you see me in the camera? I've got probably 50% of my weight sitting in my saddle seat. And I have both of my feet firmly planted on steps. So I have three points of body contact that are solid as a rock because it's on a tree. When you take a tree stand, a lot of times, unless the shot's just right there to your left or maybe slightly maybe in front of you, you got probably a 120 degree, 150 degree swing where you can actually stay seated and take your shot. Other than that, to shoot around to that side, if you're sitting on a tree stand, you know, you can shoot probably out here staying seated. If you want to shoot over here to your side, the trees behind you, you literally have to stand up on a tree stand. So basically you're balancing yourself on two feet. And a lot of guys stand up to shoot no matter what direction it is. So anytime you're standing up, you are somewhat balancing only on two feet. So this one here with a saddle, you've got three points of solid body contact. So when you, when you draw your bow back, you are just solid as a rock. Most of you don't have a little tremor like I do. I wished I didn't, but I didn't used to, but I do now. But uh, you can definitely shoot more solid out of a saddle than you can out of any kind of tree stand. Also for gun hunters, gun hunters, it's awesome because you can actually use the tree as, as a bench. <laughs> so, you know, if, if I wanted to shoot my van, you know, whatever it would be, I'd swing around into the position where I could just grab the front of the stock of a gun. I don't gun hunt, but you could ask, hold your hand against the tree and just lean, lean here and take your shot. You've got a good solid rest to, to lean the gun against. A lot of times with a tree stand, you don't have that. Uh, a lot of longbow shooters, you know, they're like, well, can I shoot a longbow out of the saddle? Well, of course you can. And you can shoot straight down. You know, with a tree stand, you can't shoot straight down because the platform you're standing on are, is, is in the way of the limbs of your bow. With a saddle, you can actually just spin around. You could shoot straight down. I would never take that shot. It's a bad shot angle, but you could if you had to. So with a, uh, with a saddle, you got all kinds of room around you as long as you clear out the branches in the tree, okay? to take, take shots, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna have plenty of clearance depending on how you clean out the tree. So that's an advantage. One, another thing I see on a lot of videos, and you should never do this, and I may make some people mad by saying this, but I see guys that'll put their foot against a tree, you know, and lean out like this and, and take shots. That should never ever happen. That's not what these are designed for. You're not supposed to be an acrobat to hunt out of a saddle. Did you notice that made noise? Anytime you're in a smooth bark tree, if you're in a pressured area and it's quiet and you do that, you're done. If you're trying to shoot a three and a half year old buck and you do that, that hunt's over. He's gone. Ain't like TV and managed properties where they look up at you and say, what the hell are you? And then they turn around and keep doing their thing and you shoot them. So that is something that should never ever happen. You never put your foot against the side of the tree, especially on a rough bark tree. And if you notice, if you notice on these steps down here, I've kind of cleared the bark away a little tiny bit. I've taken a hatchet, this hatchet here, and I cleared the bark away before I, I prepped that, before I put those steps in there. Now, typically uh, I'd use a saw, but this particular time I used a hatchet. So, don't put your foot against a tree unless potentially if it's a smooth bark tree and you have no option, I guess you could do it, but it is definitely not a design feature for saddle hunting.
I got to pull myself back up because I let a little of that out when I went to the other side of the tree. Um, when you prep trees for a saddle, once you take your saddle down, nobody else can see where you were because it's not there. You know, I did a video on public land a few weeks ago and we found, and it's after season, most of the, all the stands are supposed to be gone. They're open to stealing. Anybody can go in on public land right now and take those stands down and they're theirs because you're supposed to have them out 30 days or something after season. So um, we found eight stands in a 200 yard square area. And uh, you know, with, with the saddle, nobody knows where you were. With a stand, everybody knows where you're hunting. Um, so that's another, another advantage of a saddle. Nobody's gonna say, oh my God, there's a guy up there, there's a stand up there, I might hunt this. He's not here, it's on public land, so I'll just hunt it because he's probably not gonna be here. With a saddle, that ain't gonna happen. They're not gonna hunt your spot and they're not gonna know where you were hunting because there's nothing there. Um, it's its own climbing harness. That's a, that's a big, big, big issue. The saddle, because it has alignment loops on it, you can use that as a climbing harness for preparing trees. You know, it gives you both hands free to put steps in, put sticks on, if you're on private ground, screw stuff in. Um, it, it just have a lot more things that you can do out of a saddle than, uh, than just hunt out of it. It's its own safety. If you're out prepping locations and you're a tree stand hunter, you actually have to have a separate, some form of a climbing harness. Or if you're freelancing and you're a tree stand hunter with a tree stand on your back, you have to have some sort of an apparatus separate from your tree stand for prepping the tree. For putting the sticks on and stuff so you got to have both hands free so you got to have some form of climbing harness as well as the stand um, i think i mentioned you can wear it in so you can wear it like a seat uh, that's all the advantage that is that i can think of right now but uh, definitely don't put your foot against the tree that's what these steps are for on this particular tree if you'd pan down there's lots of different types of apparatuses for actually hunting from. Now I showed a couple of them here. I've got, this, I got four steps on the tree right now that are two, this is one of them. They're two one half inch screw-ins. And then on the other side of the tree, I've got two Cranford Deluxe folding screw-in steps. So that's what I typically like to hunt from as far as actually having my feet on when I'm physically hunting. And then below that, I put a Cranford ring of steps. So on public land, that's something you could use. These are just a strap on ring of steps working exactly the same manner. They just go around the tree. Got them a little lower than the other ones, so. And I will say this, we just threw these on here for this video. There's four steps around here. There's four screw-ins and there's four on the strap-on ring. Uh, if I were hunting this, I'd have five because to me, that's too rigid of a movement. I don't want to make that rigid of a movement. I'd rather have it be just right here where I just, I. To go from this step to that step, there's a short period of time, maybe a half a second, where gravity is working on my body and I have no control over stopping it. Uh, that, to me, is unacceptable. You should always have control over your body because typically when you're gonna move on your steps, it's when there's a shot opportunity coming into view. You're moving around to position yourself for something, which means there's a deer there. So any sudden movements or jerks uh, you know, it's just more apt to get picked. So keep your steps. These are probably 11 inches apart to 12, yeah, probably 12 inches apart. Keep your steps eight to 10 inches apart, the gaps between them, and your steps need to be parallel with the ground. So evenly space them around the tree, parallel to the ground. Um, I can't think of anything else. My son John, who's behind the camera, has been hunting out of a saddle for probably 30 years. 30 more, more than 30 years. 31 years. Okay, he's pointing to one of them. 
So uh, can you think of anything that I forgot? I'm going to get in the saddle again and show you the difference between hunting on a ring of steps and hunting on a platform. I want to mention the pouches. For Thanks for watching another episode of Eberhard Outdoors and please like and subscribe.